three different oil patterns and an arena style setting have tested the skills and versatility of a star studded field of bowlers. We started with 115 and are down to five. But only one can be crowned king of the swing. Who will it be? The best bowlers in the world are on CBS Sports Network. The Oklahoma's Grand Casino and Resort King of the Swing starts now. the PBA Summer Swing on CBS Sports Network. It's the King of the Swing event. Five of the world's best bowlers competing for a championship for the Grand Casino Resort Event Center in Oklahoma City. We feature step ladder bowling today for the five our PBA Summer Swing Tour titles. Tommy Jones receives the wild card, bringing with him 15 career PBA Tour titles. How do we get here? Ebony flashback. We started with a PBA summer swing, 32-foot roll pattern. It was Sean Rash who tamed that animal. Going for the fourth position, starting the competition off with a perfect 300 game. Sean then ran through some of the best competition on his way to victory. His eighth career title, he was pumped. Celebrates with his family. Contested on what many consider to be the toughest of the three patterns. Ronnie Russell toughed it out, won three matches on his way to the championship. The PBA Bear Open, second win of his great career, first though on U.S. soil. Special moment for Indiana's Ronnie Russell. In the Badger Open, one of the best championship matches the Pro Bowler Tour has seen in some time. Two-handed beast Brian Valenta from outside Chicago, matched up with PBA veteran Bill O'Neill. Shot for shot. O'Neill needed a double in the tenth to win it. And he got it. And with it, a championship. And the Oklahoma Open, hold on conditions as tough as they come. Jason Belmonte. The two-hander from down under, able to once again come from the fifth seed to capture the title over the top seed, E.J. Tackett, as he did at this year's Masters in New Jersey. Tenth career title for the likely player of the year. Been a great event so far in Oklahoma City. My Hall of Fame broadcast partner, Andy Peterson. Joined by a special guest, John Rocky Barrett, tribal chairman of the Citizen Potawatomi Nation. Thanks, Dave. Rocky, thanks so much for spending some time with us. What does it mean to have the greatest bowlers in the world here at the Grand Resort in Oklahoma? Oh, it has been a wonderful event, and I am so grateful to the PBA for this summer swing event and, for, of course, for CBS Sports. Uh, we are, uh, this is our first national attention event and we are very excited about it and you guys have done a wonderful job it's been a it's been a thrill it really has we're grateful so. well we're grateful to be here now i know you've you've watched some bowling this week uh, and throughout the event do you have a favorite bowler no <laughs> <laughs> do you have anybody uh you have anybody you're pulling for here in the finals uh, i'm pulling for all of them i'm, I'm not going to take sides at this point i'm for all of them so diplomatic rocky thank uh, you so much for your time yes, thank you randy, I appreciate it. randy rocky thank you and thanks for rocky support here in oklahoma city point standings o'neill belmonte sean rash and russell all champs ej tack at the top seat failed to advance though Tommy Jones is in as a wild card. The number five seed is the king of the swing wild card from Simpsonville, South Carolina, Tommy Jones. That's just outside Greenville, Spartanburg. And Tommy Jones, 15 titles. A lock for the Hall of Fame. A lot of work, though. Before that, perfect. One-three pocket strike for Tommy Jones. 
who throughout the summer swing and a couple of appearances really struggled. Woo. That's got to feel good. The number four seed is the PBA Bear Open champion from Marion, Indiana, country boy, Ronnie Russell. Start for each bowler here today. Ronnie Russell, real high back swing. Look at this thing, it's vertical. Look how straight up and down that arm swing is probably the highest back swing on tour. And then that same power created by the cupped elbow and wrist at the bottom of the swing. Great athlete, real strong kid. Crunches 10 down to the pit. Impressive start. Badger oil pattern, 52 feet in length. Remember, the lane is only 60 feet long, not counting the approach. That's from foul line to the end of the pin deck. That leaves eight feet of back end. That's why you're not going to see the big ball motion entering the pins. Players are going to play that roll early fallback set shot, kind of like old school back what we used to do in the 80s. Were you even alive in the 80s, Dave? Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> right lane, Jones. Oh, this got to feel so great after his struggles early in the summer swing. Off to a perfect start. Yes, I was alive in the 80s. Th this has got to feel like a house shot compared to what Tommy Jones uh, experienced bowling on bear. You see Tommy Jones has got the big high back swing as well. Not quite as vertical as, Tom, as uh, Ronnie Russell, but the same snapping of the elbow and wrist. That's what creates revolutions. Think about it as kind of throwing a yo-yo. You know how you cup it and then you uncup it. The faster you can uncup that wrist and elbow, the more revolutions you apply to a bowling ball. Looking for a break on the six. Just leaves that, luckily no split for Tommy Jones. And because the old pattern is so long, Dave, the players look to miss left of target for the right-handers, not to the right of target. You miss right of target on a 52-foot oil pattern, there's just not enough recovery down the lane. I might want to clean that. I had something, apparently I had something on my shoes that like a line. Tommy stepped in something, not quite sure what he got on the bottom of his sole. It actually left a mark on the approach. You see it. Got it. A little bit of approach cleaner and a rag and Problem Here, solved. Draw that up. <laughs> <laughs> Stayed behind the foul line and covered the spare, so no harm, no foul for Tommy Jones. We good. Again, you don't see a, a player with the power of Ronnie Russell leave too many of these flat tens. See how the six pin just goes to the sidewall and lays dead in the gutter. But that's because of the lack of entry angle into the pocket. So notice how soft the ball is entering into the, into the pins. That's where you're going to see a lot of the flat tens. Arsenal for Ronnie Russell. What do you see here, Randy? Primal Rage. He's going through, going with the strongest ball in his arsenal. Most of the players have done that on this oil pattern. They use a little bit of surface, but a very aggressive bowling ball. That's better. 60 feet to success for Ronnie Russell. 
as he absolutely shreds the rack. Just not something you see that often anymore. The subtlety of the motion in the back part of the lane Ball with these high-powered bowling balls. But you put 52 feet of oil on the lane, and this is what you get. I remember bowling Tournament of Champions a couple of years in a row where it was a 50-foot oil pattern, but I've never bowled on 52 feet. You would have had great scores. Probably not. <laughs> My ball would have hit like it weighed 12 pounds. Four pin for Tommy. Was the top seed in the Bear Open throughout the summer swing. Seen on CBS Sports Network this year. Despite being 13 and 4 coming in and title matches on TV, couldn't close it out. Well, he's had a nice summer swing. You know, the five players on the telecast today are the, are the five best, the, the, the five best players throughout the summer swing. And, and uh, yeah, we're in for a, a great treat with all the talent that we have on the telecast. The winners of Badger, Wolf, Bear, the Oklahoma Open. Some great talent on the telecast today. Hey, Ryan Randy Peterson with you from Oklahoma City. Tommy Jones, all 10 down. Randy, member of the all-time PBA Top 50 and a PBA Hall of Famer. Got ourselves a good match brewing up here, partner. One pin match. Ronnie Russell working on a strike in the fourth frame can increase the lead to 11. I think we have more strikes in the first Five, four and a half frames than we did all of them last week. A little help with the 10. Not that time for running in the right lane. Uh, throughout this summer, the Oklahoma Open. Boy, strikes were hard to come by. Again, another flat 10 on the right lane for Ronnie Russell. He's looking at his hand like, uh, come on. Thumb out first, fingers out second. There's the 10, there's the mark for Ronnie Russell. It was nice to see Ronnie win on the bear. He beat his opponent right now, Tommy Jones, and beat him handily. Ronnie Russell made a very difficult oil pattern look pretty easy. Ronnie was a three seed in that event. From about an hour north of Indianapolis in Marion, Indiana. Got here by winning that bear championship. Over. Tommy Jones, today's opponent. No help on number nine. Yeah, but he got help on the four pin and tripped the four out. No split. Very tight angles on this oil pattern to the pocket for both players. Ronnie Russell told us highlight of his career, winning here at the Summer Swing in Oklahoma City. First career victory on U.S. soil. His first victory ever been in Germany this season. Wants to win again today. Oklahoma's Grand Casino Resort King of the Swing is brought to you by GEICO. Saving people money on more than just car insurance. By Roto Grip. Your time is now. Own it. And by Radical Bowling Technologies. Wow, that's radical. Just east of Oklahoma City, the Grand Casino. 262 rooms, 13 floors, fitness center, spa, meeting space, golf club. Great dining options, great gaming. And fantastic bowling as well. Wrap up our summer swing. Ten lead now after that nice double by TJ. 
Well, it's nice seeing him back on the telecast, isn't it? He, he uh, suffering with some injuries as we take a look at his arsenal, going with pivot point. But he had the hip injury. He had a neck issue. Finally healthy and bowling well again. Nice to see. Nice pitch there in a groove. Tommy Jones. He's been working on getting his legs underneath him, and you could see it right there. What a great position at the foul line and a great result. Turkey for Jones. Seventh frame for Russell. Ball 10 down, Ronnie Russell. And there's the difference between the week 10 and the six pin kicking the 10 out. Ronnie got his hand into that one, and the power made the bowling ball go through the pins correctly. Good shot. Dang it. Really good shot. Too good. Boy, he needed that one too to cut into the deficit. Tommy Jones is in a good spot right now. Ronnie Russell, not so much. Great shot there. Six goes up and around the 10. That's a ringing 10 pin. The definition. There's the 10 for his mark. Ball is squarely in Tommy Jones' court right now. Looks like more bagger, eighth frame. They go up by 30 pins. And take firm command of the match. Ten pin again, back to back, ring ten. Looked like the Ronnie Russell hit on the left lane again. A good shot. Tommy Jones bowling a very tidy game. He's in the 220s right now. There's the six doing its its deal, going around the ten pin. Unlike the bear oil pattern, the players have a really nice look to the pocket but they still have to get the bowling ball to enter the pins correctly to knock all 10 down when it does get there. Nikki Jones, Tommy's wife. Been here in support. <laughs> Doesn't her name just sound like, like maybe a singer? That's Nikki Jones, the singer. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. It's some kind of musical icon or something. And Nikki enjoys seeing that. Perfect strike from her husband on the left lane. Nothing more Ronnie Russell would like than to wrap up the summer swing with a victory. It's been a great summer already for him. And the 10 pin. Dang it. Well, it's three flat tens all on the right lane for Ronnie Russell. 10 pin in the third, 10 pin in the fifth, ringing 10 in the eighth, another flat 10 in the ninth. Right now, if he makes this, he's maxed out at 217. Tommy Jones is in the 220s with a mark in the 10. There's a spare for Ronnie. Back home with Marion, wife Michelle, sons Kate and Cameron, daughter Taylor watching closely. Hope the dad can do it again on this summer swing. We talked about how Tommy Jones puts his thumb in the ball first and finger second. Guess who else does that? Ronnie Russell. I'm going to go home and try that. 
Good shot, not the break he wanted. Ringing 10 there. Now Tommy Jones doesn't even need a mark in the 10th frame. He's going to advance the 10 pin. The undoing for Ronnie Russell here in our first match. There's a 10. I'm talking about putting the thumb in first, other finger second. Does that create any advantage for bowling? No, I mean, it's just a comfort thing. It's just what they've done pretty much throughout their entire bowling career. It's what feels comfortable. I've always put my fingers in first and then crammed my thumb in. Little help on the four, down it goes. Oh, he's happy to it's a kill shot. I'll trade you. <laughs> of course, this couldn't have been the first ball in the 10th frame. Or, excuse me, that was the first ball in the 10th frame. Trip four was on the fill shot. Over. Tommy Jones has advanced up the step ladder. Uh, the Oklahoma's Grand Casino Resort King of the Swing. Thanks, champ of this event in Milwaukee last year, Norm Duke. Legendary Hall of Famer. With his 37 wins, tied with Pete Weber for third all time. Norm not a part of this year's summer swing, but Tommy Jones is. He's knocked off Ronnie Russell. He'll take on John Rash, already a winner on the summer swing this year in Oklahoma City. Tommy Jones, outstanding bowling. John Rash, next up. Tommy Jones trying to climb the ladder, a win over Ronnie Russell, and our king of the swing event here on CBS Sports Network. Step ladder bowling. Sean Rash won the Wolf Open this summer. Awaits Tommy Jones. Dave Ryan with my Hall of Fame broadcast partner Randy Peterson here in Oklahoma City. Great to have with us on CBS Sports Network. Tremendous bowling again. As Sean Rash awaits Tommy Jones. A couple power players about to go head to head. What do you expect here? I, I think the scoring pace is going to be very, very good. I think the players broke the oil pattern down perfectly in practice. That was evident by how many balls hit the pocket in that first match. Ronnie Russell ran into some carry problems. That's the only reason why he shot 206. Tommy Jones, 236. I think that's kind of the scoring pace. That's what I expect. 230s, 240s, unless somebody gets red hot. Who knows? Sean Rash did bowl a 300 game during the summer swing. You never know. So Tommy Jones got to be feeling better after struggles earlier in the summer swing. But Sean Rash, as you mentioned, partner, must be feeling great. After the 300 game and his eighth career title, he is ready to take on TJ Rash Jones. Great matchup in Oklahoma City. Oklahoma's Grand Casino Resort King of the Swing continues next. We can't wait for this matchup from Oklahoma City. Tommy Jones, Sean Rash head to head. Two of the best in the world as the King of the Swing rolls on. Time for Randy in this week's Track Tech Talk. Well, Dave, you know, there's a couple of different ways to target. You can either look down the lane, you can look at the arrows, or you can look short. Wes Mallott likes to look right down at the foul line. Check this out. Look where those eyes are pointing. Tommy Jones, however, well, he targets at the arrows. Either way works. For you folks at home, if you're having trouble hitting your target, bring it closer to you. Maybe look between the foul line and the arrows. Love that, partner. Very interesting to see the contrasting styles. This be That's the beauty of this sport, you know, all shapes and sizes, different styles, but there are a lot of common denominators as well. Arm swing direction, how the players put power on the ball. Tommy Jones starts us off with a strike on the left lane. He's got a nice look, doesn't he? The number three seed is the PBA Wolf Open champion from Montgomery, Illinois, Sean Rash. Sean so emotional on CBS Sports Network after he won the Wolf Open. His parents, Gene and Diana, first time in his career were not at the arena to watch him in person. On TV. 
and he won a title. Dedicated his championship to them. Wife Sarah, eight-month-old daughter Kaylee are here though in Oklahoma City. There's Sarah right behind Sean. You want to know how to be a top-notch player, you have to be versatile. Remember when Sean did all of his dirty work at the Wolf Championship? He was really swinging the ball out to the edge of the gutter and back, and now look how straight he's going. Got to be versatile, versatile to be a champion on the PBA Tour. Look how straight that is in comparison. I mean, it wasn't that long ago when he was booming it to the edge of the lane and back. This is called fallback between fourth and fifth arrow. This is old school. Dave Husted was better than anybody at this back in the 80s. I remember him winning three United States Opens playing the lanes like that. It's a great start for Rash. Two-time All-American at Wichita State. Back to Tommy Jones. Nice. These balls are in the groove with some power playing. Remember when we watched Brian Valenta on the same oil pattern? He took a sandblasted bowling ball, threw it down the middle of the lane in practice, and really tore up this oil pattern. Well, these players didn't do that. That's why they're getting their bowling balls consistently to the pocket. They broke this oil pattern down perfectly. Brian did it out of pure strategy, and he was one shot away from winning his first ever career title. That's high. 6 10 stands. Valenta lost to Bill O'Neill. Badger. When Bill needs a double and attempt to win it, which he got. This shot su surprised Tommy. It jerked early, and you see how it, it caught just enough friction to go high. There's a spare. Six-time Team USA member, Sean Rash. Tremendous amateur and now professional career. First title of his season came in that Wolf Open. Started by the 300 game. And he's got a great start here. He beat Chris Barnes in the title match, 238-179. Sarah and Nikki. Sean and Tommy's wives. Good friendship there. Rooting their husbands on. It's going with Max Hook with the mastermind. Another. He didn't like it, but he caught a nice break. Trip four. A great start for Rash here in this one. Stuck a little bit on the approach. Normally when you stick, you have a propensity to tug it just a hair. He did, but he fell it back nicely. Front four for Sean Rash. We've seen this before, haven't we? A 300 game. First game out of the gate this summer on the summer swing. Jones knocked off Russell. Wants to get Rash, but the eight pin. Perfect pocket hit. Only leave a solid eight. It's not what you want to see when your opponent starts with the front four. It's a great look from our crew. Pins exploding all around the eight pin, but nowhere near it. Picks up the mark, but the way Rash has started, that might not be good enough. Tommy Jones, left lane excellence. Well, earlier this
this summer, we saw Sean Rash just Go. brilliant bowling at the Wolf Open. You can see where he was playing the lanes there. And now, let's take a look at how he's playing this oil pattern. Completely different ball reaction. Another. One five. Great lane level look at the rotation of that bowling ball and the subtle motion as the ball comes off the end of the pattern. Lead balloons at 33 pins can go to 43 with a strike here. And he can be halfway to perfection again at the PBA summer swing. How about six? You bet. Half a dozen. 43 pin lead for Sean Rash. Yes, we've seen this before this summer in Oklahoma City. A 300 game. Can he do it again? He has got a great path to the pocket. We'll find out. Stay with us. Nothing more exciting than watching a 300 game. And Sean Rash is halfway there. The front six. And a massive 43 pin lead on 15 time titleist Tommy Jones. You know, you're getting a little greedy. You show up, first game out of the gate in the summer swing, we get a 300 game. Mm -hmm. Nothing but excitement, great title matches, and you want more. It's never enough for you, Dave. Tommy Jones crunches it into the one free pocket. That's right, I do want a 300 game. Yeah, it wouldn't. Head to PBA.com, find out how you can join the growing number of fans following the PBA on Twitter. Get tweets featuring PBA tour news and tournament updates. Find information about linking to the Twitter accounts of your favorite PBA star. Simply click the Twitter link on the PBA.com homepage to get started. What do you call three in a row? Turkey. Okay, you know what? I think we should call nine in a row if Sean gets there. What's that? Turducken. <laughs> TJ. On the left lane, has his turkey. Nine in a row, not seven. No, nine, nine. because it's like three, three, and three. Turducken. Okay, gotcha, three, three, three. Nice shot there by Tommy Jones. He's oh, battling still, trying to stay in this. You know, if he carries a stone eight in the fourth frame, he's going at a 278 pace. Instead, as he can shoot 267. And he needs to see a lot of that. Can't get the seventh in a row. No 300 game. Would have been a $10,000 bonus for the televised 300 game for Sean, but that's out the window now. And you know what else, Dave? No turducken. Not more importantly. <sighs> There's the seven. Mr. Peterson, you are truly a piece of work. We have a match, my friend. 279 max score Sean Rash, 267 match, max score Tommy Jones. Yeah, almost had some dangerous splits to deal with potentially there, but just a six. And a single pin spare conversion to keep the lead. Well, that could have been disastrous because this one goes right through the schnozzola, only leaving the six pin. Wolf Open Champ has his six pin, has his mark. And crunch time now. Tommy Jones looks for the four-bagger in the eighth frame. Cut it to 11 pins. Could take a lead here in the foundation frame, potentially. Tommy Jones has got to keep his foot on the accelerator, and he has to keep the pressure, or at least try to apply some pressure to, to Sean Rash by striking in the eighth and ninth frame. Trip seven, pressure applied. 
Nice pin carry there for Tommy Jones as he goes just a little bit light in the pocket, saws the five over into the seven. One more strike in the ninth frame will make Sean Rash think about it. Back score now for Sean Rash, 268. Tommy Jones can take it off the sheet for 267. Tommy's got to be thinking to himself right now, strike or go home. Tommy's in the 230s right now. Sean Rash in the 240s. It's been pretty good on the left lane, striking seven out of nine times. Foundation frame looks for a five-bagger. Oh, no. Four, nine, split. Horrible, horrible break. Not real nice. That left lane has hooked more than the right lane throughout the summer swing. It breaks down faster. It catches players. It traps players. They don't make the adjustment. Tommy Jones pays for it. Sean Rash went to the nose last time on that lane. Tommy gets up. May have made an adjustment. I don't know, but he hits the pocket, leaving the pocket 4-9. Terrible, terrible break, and it couldn't have happened at a worse time. Could have cut the lead to one pin. The five bagger in the ninth instead. He opened and opens up a huge lead for Rash. Who takes advantage? Well, with good count, Sean Rash will advance. Eight in two balls would give Sean Rash 234. Best Tommy Jones can shoot 233. It's over. 2011-2012 PBA Player of the Year. Sean's got some fans here as well in Oklahoma City. And he will climb the ladder again. See that very often as he blows on one of the guns. It's not my fault you didn't listen. That is the one. A little yeah. Colin Kaepernick action there. But he does knock off Tommy Jones. Jason Belmonte, likely player of the year, the reigning player of the year in the PBA Tour. Awaits Sean Rash. Tremendous matchup. Two of the best in the world on the way. John Rash continues to climb the ladder. Knocks off 15-time titleist Tommy Jones. 257, 212. Flirting for the 300 game with the front six. So next up, Jason Belmonte. Belmo, reigning player of the year. Likely player of the year this year. Most PBA fans know the history and relationship between Jason and Sean. That relationship brought to the forefront at the first ever PBA Super Clash. In a total pinfall, three games series. Belmonte defeated Rash 743-718. Each player won one match. Jason took a three-pin lead going to the final match. Belmo had two separate four strike strings that Rash could not match and won the last game 244-222 in a Super Bowl Sunday clash that wowed the fans at Thunder Bowl Lanes. That was fun to watch. And now, these two bowling greats go head-to-head -head again. Safe to say, not the best of friends. And now, Abbott Series on the lanes here today in Oklahoma City. Belmonte Rash, what a matchup we've got for you. Summer Swing continues on CBS Sports Network. What a matchup we've got here today in Oklahoma City. Couple adversaries, Rash, Belmonte, and been a busy summer swing, Randy. A little finger issue there with Belmo. Why did you just tell me to go? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell Belmo what uh, Harry the Tiger Smith used to tell us on the tour when we had a blister on our finger. He would say, hey, spit on it and throw strikes. Stop whining, right? I promise you, with the <laughs> adrenaline going through Jason Belmonte right now, he's, he's not worried about a little blister on his finger.
Rash leads us off. And 6-10. So, Randy, where is this relationship right now? It's well known. You can YouTube it, folks, if you're watching. We can't show you, but the bottle incident. Recent time between these two really created a huge buzz. How about now? Um, it, it may have simmered down a little bit, but these two aren't going to dinner after this match is over. I can promise you that. There you go. Make it. And that's not entirely unhealthy for the PBA Tour to have these no, rivalries, right? Ri rivalries are a good thing. We have rivalries in every sport, and um, certainly right. not an issue here in bowling. The number two seed is the PBA Oklahoma Open champion from Orange, New South Wales, Australia, Jason Belmonte. It's a matchup of the last two PBA Player of the Year winners. And Belmonte has been red hot. Two majors this year, Oklahoma Open. I'd like to wrap up the summer swing with another win. Off to a good start. He's got a huge lead in that player of the year race and winning the Oklahoma Open certainly padded that stat. But Bill O'Neill, if he were to win this tournament, even though it doesn't count as a PBA title, it may sway the votes just a little bit, may get him back into the into the race somewhat. Trip seven hasn't been since 97-98. Back to back PBA Players of the Year, Hall of Famer Walter Ray Williams Jr. completed that feat. This is what makes Jason Belmonte so dangerous. I'm not sure I've ever seen him throw it this slow. He is so good at adjusting speed. Nice shot, Sean. Jason Belmonte is so good at adjusting speed, rev rate, and rotation with the two-handed style. Pretty dangerous combination when you've got all that working for you, all that power. Jason Belmonte is a talented guy throwing a bowling ball. And 6-10 up for Rash in the left lane. The left lane has been destroyed in practice by Belmonte's high rev rate. You can see Sean Rash going through the nose once again because that bowling ball hit the lane and jerked early. Had no chance to lay off right through the nose, leaving the 6-10 again. He's going to have to make another adjustment on that left lane. and. Boy, if you're Sean Rash right now, you certainly don't want to finish on that lane. Interesting that Belmonte chose to finish on the left lane. Belmont. He had a great conversation with Jason about the tournament he bowled at an event in Sweden where the fans are rowdy. Drums, whistles, music, yelling, even in the player's backswing. Break down the lane here a little bit, and I'll get your answer after this. The oil pattern on the left lane in match number one. And let's take a look going into match three. You can see the laydown area. You can see where all of the traffic is right there at Fifth Arrow. How about that, Randy? Would you like to have cheering before the shot? He didn't he tell us it was like his he favorite he tournament. It. Yeah, he said it's like his favorite tournament in the world. Tread the rack there. Etiquette, of course, on the PBA tour. Lots of cheering once the ball's in the lane, but on the approach, it's silent in the bowling center or the arena. How would you do with whistling and cheering before you shot? Well, there was a time out here where they wanted the fans to cheer as the player stepped up on the approach. And as long as the, the noise is constant, it's fine. But it, it's, the problem is when it goes from dead silence to 
somebody breaking a bottle, a cell phone going off, something like that in the middle of the approach, that's when it becomes a problem. Hmm. Ten down, recent Ryder Cup up in Rochester, New York on the golf side. Some of the early rounds, the fans are cheering at the, the first tee. I think that's just so cool. This ball just shreds the rack for Sean hey, Rash. Rack, now he needs to make another adjustment on the left lane and find a way to hit the pocket and strike. Again, the good news is he gets to finish on the right lane. You can hear Sean saying trusted, and that's because he made a move and a ball change on that left lane. You have to commit. You make the adjustment, you have to commit to it. It's the only way you're going to be able to throw a good shot. I did. The accent there. It's good. I like that. You do that well. <laughs> this ball's a pretty good shot here in just that last second, right before it enters the one three. It drifts just a pinch high, only leaving the four pin. Has the four pin. One of three regular bowlers in the PBA Tour who use two hands. What does he say to the detractors of the two-handed style? I think there's a, a slight hint of jealousy towards what we can do with a bowling ball with two hands. We can curve it and, and uh, create a little bit more power than, than most of the traditional players. But you know, there are plenty of times where you know, the high rev rate and the, uh, the extra power it gets me into more trouble than, than good. So it's, you know, I think it's just one of those things that if you can't do it instead of hating on it, um, I don't know, try it. Seven pin there for Jason Belmonte. Oh, this is harsh. I mean, this ball goes high flush and watch this. This is called a stone seven. Goes with more loft and then up and over the top of the seven pin. That's nasty. Everything would take out the seven. We talk a lot about the two-handed style, Randy. Bottom line, if you can do it well, like Belmonte, keep on rolling. He's never known another style, told us. Growing up in Australia, that's how he got his start. Let's take a look at the Columbia 300. Fun fact, installation of the lanes here in Oklahoma City. Took five days, 300 man hours. Were you out here early from your Central Florida home to help put them together? No, but five days and 300 man hours? That's how long it takes me to do my dirty laundry. I have nowhere to go with that, so I'm just going to move on. You are ridiculous. We love you anyway, man. Six frame. Looks for the turkey here. Gets it. Nice comeback for Sean Rash after the first couple of shots going through the nose on the left lane. He's got a strike on the left lane now, and he's turned it into a three-bagger. As the players continue to chase, the oil line to the left. Jason Belmonte already lofting. And we're only in game three. See Sean using a different ball on the left lane. Seven frame looks for the four bagger. You better believe it. Perfect placement into the one three pocket for Sean Rash. And it looks like Mr. Momentum has changed his address. Sean Rash now has a two pin lead. First time you used the Mr. Momentum line. Tire swing. Been waiting for that one. It's one of your classics. Which one? Mr. Momentum. Yeah. 
back to Belmont. Nice help on seven. The four stands for a single pin conversion attempt. Boy, did this match flip sides in a matter of two frames. Belmont, who started with the front four, now it's going now has gone nine spare, nine spare, and if he converts this, will be another nine spare. Sean Rash, four bagger, late. Looked like it was going to be a runaway early. As we take a look at Jason Belmonte's arsenal going with zero gravity. Two thousand nine rookie of the year does have a three hundred TV game to his credit. Was the twenty first in tour history. Both players in this match have a 300 game to their credit on television. Juan, I got the call. With you. Here in Oklahoma City. And left lane success for Belmonte, keeping things very interesting as we head down the stretch run of this match. Big frame. Rash working on a four bagger here. Well, that's where the ball actually touched down on the lane. Not quite the distance Brian Valenta was getting, but a lot of loft nonetheless. Throughout the summer here, Brian was well past that arrow. Looks for the five bagger. We'll get it. And stay hot. <laughs> Some good pin action there. As that ball goes light, swishes the 5 7 late. Sean Rash in control and he's increased his lead to 13. To that. See a lot of the balking from Sean. <coughs> and there is a fine associated with each balk. He wants the tournament title, or in this case, the event title. A bigger payday from winning the event. Ooh, 10 pin. Good shot there, but. If you're sitting in Belmonte's chair, that's exactly what you needed to see happen. Great shot. That's all you can ask for. What a great ball change and adjustment he made on this left lane. Belmonte can cut the lead to two with a strike here in the ninth frame. Belmonte can also strike out to shoot 257. The best Sean Rash can do now, 249. Belmonte controls his own destiny. If he strikes out, he will bowl Bill O'Neill for the title. Foundation frame. There's one. Now, does he make a move on this left lane before he throws a shot? Last time on that left lane, he went high flush. That left lane has a tendency to break down in the middle of games where players get trapped. They don't move. They don't anticipate the move prior to the lane breaking down. The ball's going high. I wonder if he's going to make a move before he throws this shot. He needs a double and three pins to shut out Sean Rash. Left lane, 10 pin. Boy, that's something you don't see very often from Belmonte leaving a week 10. With all that power, it took a 52 foot pattern to slow his bowling ball down through the pins. You can see the week 10 right there. A 
bet you everybody in the building. And he missed the 10 pin. Including Sean Rash. Did not expect that. That ball is for cold day long. Sean on the bench. The season's fortunes turned dramatically. Expecting, as Belmo has done so often over the last several years, to strike out. What a crazy match. So back and forth. Oh, no. Almost a 5 7 split. Just the seven pin standing. Sean Rash is your winner. And the two adversaries. A quick handshake there. Seven pin avoids the split. That's the good news for Rash, and he advances. Another I mean, leg up the step ladder. That was crazy. But Monty gets up in the tenth frame. He can okay. double the win. Next thing you know, he's packing his gear. What a turn of events. This, is, this match was so back and forth. Belmonte in the lead early, then Sean Rash, then back to Belmonte, and Rash is moving on. Great shot. Yeah, I got eight. I don't know how, but I got eight. Thanks. Sean Rash advances to take on Bill O'Neill. He's already warming up and getting ready. Championship on the line for the Grand Casino Event Center in Oklahoma City. Can Sean Rash climb the ladder to a title? We'll find out. Sean Rash has advanced up the step ladder with a win over Reigning Player of the Year, Jason Belmonte. So now two PBA Summer Swing titleists are set to go head to head. Bill O'Neill, the Badger Open champ against Wolf Open winner, Sean Rash. Moments ago, speaking to his tour reps about strategy. We did it. Well, you're, well, you're a player just like I am. You want to finish the match first because you want to put the pressure on the opponent. Right. And having the finish on this lane is not the right idea. Yeah, he's going to have to choose the lane based on what his ball is doing, not what he's going to want you to have to do. He cannot finish on this lane. No. He can't finish on this lane. He can't start the match. But well, we don't mind finishing on this lane. I don't mind. No. I've got the right ball now. Right. How many was that? Three? Right. Get six? He gets eight. eight. But after two. after six, I get two, he gets two. But your two have to be one on each lane. Yeah, but I get it's a spare shot. You don't get to throw strike shots anymore. It's actually a good thing. I mean to a certain right. It's the right thing because you can't I mean I lined up yesterday. I mean, Former I, major finalist Robert Lawrence, Chuck Gardner, tour reps for Sean Rash giving advice. His opponent, Bill O'Neill, five-time title us on the PBA Tour. A championship is at stake. Randy Peterson, how do we get to this point of the match? Let's take a look at our Geico championship recap. Well, Dave, match number one was Tommy Jones taking on Ronnie Russell. Tommy Jones got off to a quick start, hit the pocket with every ball. He takes down Ronnie Russell, 236-206. Then in match number two, red hot Sean Rash takes on Tommy Jones. Rash, big time quick start. He starts with the front six. Tommy Jones, he got a four bagger midstream. He had a chance to put a pressure on Sean Rash. He four nines in the ninth frame. Sean Rash, he strikes ninth and tenth. He wins 257 to 212. And then in our last match, Sean Rash taking on the reigning player of the year, Jason Belmonte. Rash got off to a slow start, made a great adjustment through a five bagger. In the middle part of the game, Jason Belmonte could have struck out the tenth to win. Instead, he leaves the ten pin. Match was over. What a matchup we've got here! Not an official PBA Tour title at stake, but prize money and a TV show championship still. To be one. <laughs> Little forearm bump. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> they don't have insurance.
Ninth year pro. Sean Rast now lives in Montgomery, Illinois, near Chicago. Wants a good start for Penn State. Talking about a guy who grew up in Alaska, now lives in Chicago, travels the world. He could basically live anywhere he wants. Where would you live if you could live anywhere you wanted? Melbourne, Florida. You know where I would live? Where? Your house. I'll check with my wife's test, but I'm pretty sure it's a no. Got a dead <laughs> Too late. <laughs> The top seed is the PBA Badger <coughs> Open Champion from Langhorne, Pennsylvania, the real deal, Bill O'Neill. His fifth title came during this PBA summer swing in Oklahoma City. You saw it on CBS Sports Network. Bill, a big presence on the summer swing so far. We'd love to wrap it up for the championship here today. Nice start. Boy, what a job he did at the Badger Open, taking on Red Hot Brian Valentes. You take a look from lane level at that fallback shot he's playing, just like everybody else on today's telecast. But Bill O'Neill stepped up in the tenth frame and made two tremendous shots to to capture that title. And remember, as the number one seed, Bill O'Neill chose this oil pattern. Beat Valenta 243, 235 in a thrilling final. Left lane O'Neill, all ten back, denying Brian Valente his first career championship. Rash has been pretty impressive as well, summer swing. Look at the numbers. That includes a 300 game, the first match of the Wolf Open. Right out of the gates on the summer swing. Right lane for Rash. No help on number seven. Good shot, bad pin carry for Sean Rash on the right lane. See that five pin slide in front. Boy, you don't see that very often anymore with these high powered ball balls. So O'Neill wins the Badger Open. He's the number one seed coming in. He gets choice of oil pattern. And he chooses the Badger oil pattern. Can you make any sense out of that? <laughs> Why would he do that? I know, right? He's so silly. 52 feet. <sighs> Rash on the left. Mm. Boy, it's big trouble. Almost at the big four for a moment there in the seven pin, the lone pin standing for his spare. Remember, he started kind of the same way in the last match against Belmonte when he went eight spare strike, eight spare. And then he really came on strong with a five bagger. But this left lane, boy, I think Sean's got to be really pleased with the fact that Bill O'Neill decided to finish on that left lane. Exactly what Sean was talking about when discussing strategy with tour reps Robert Lawrence, former U.S. Open winner, and Chuck Gardner. That decision can potentially make or break a championship where you finish. The lanes are vastly different. High start for O'Neill continues. Ah, that's the hard. <laughs> Well, you heard him say just a little fast, but real great result here tripping out the five and the seven late. I just I have a really, I just have that feeling that Bill O'Neill is back. You know, he made the change in his approach. We've talked about the swing change. It's actually in his approach that was affecting his arm swing. He fixed that fourth step. He's confident now. He's able to make shots in the tenth frame when he needs to win. Bill O'Neill's back. How about the front four? 
Perfect start for the Bath Open champion. Wife Christy, son Gavin, nearly a year and a half. Watching back home. Langhorn, Pennsylvania outside. Philly. to his striking ways is Sean Rash. It's a good spot to hit him when you have power and revolutions. Hit him thin and watch him spin, as the late, great Billy Whalu used to say. I like that one. After three straight nine spares, that's his first strike of the match. Good one here. Fifth frame, Sean wants it. Get it, man. Four, seven, Four, seven, nine, ten split up here for Sean Rash. Tricky. Wow. That's awesome. Sean Rash has got to get the bowling ball over here to the right side, or excuse me, the left side of the four pin and drive it in to the nine and the ten. Does not. Complete defeat. 9 10 stands. Open frame for Sean Rash. Bill O'Neill off a tremendous start. 46 pin lead. Watching on the bench. That's got to feel good. Looks for the front five. Sean coming off games of 257 and 236. All of a sudden now he's shooting 184. Stays perfect. Crunches the 1 3 pocket perfectly. And the lead expands to 56 pins with a front five. Well, this is what you do when your opponent gives you an opening. When you're a PBA champion, a major championship winner, as is Bill O'Neill, you put boots to your opponent. That's exactly what he did there. Now, looking for six in a row, can increase his lead to 66 pins. Using the Black Widow Legend. Wait a minute. Hey. Hang on. Not quite enough on the four. Perfect run ends for Bill, who did win the 2010 U.S. Open. And there's the difference in the match. Bill O'Neill goes high on the left lane, and he only leaves the four pin. Sean Rash goes through the nose on the left lane, leaves the four, seven, nine, ten. Finish the tie with Walter Ray Williams Jr. and Mike Scroggins for PBA Player of the Year in 2010, but the tiebreaker gave it to the legend Walter Ray Williams Jr. Bill O'Neill's got to be feeling good. Huge lead on Sean Rash. Championship match from OKC. Bill O'Neill, big lead over Sean Rash, king of the swing here from Oklahoma City. We've had some great conversions, but nothing better in the summer swing than the hammer tough spare replay. Dick Allen in the bear. 2 8 10, Randy. You love this one. Uh, it was fantastic. It happened in match number two against Ronnie Russell. Unfortunately, Dick Allen ended up losing the match by three pins. That was special. Falls an open six frame. He's in a big, big hole. That's better. If he gets the same reaction and pin carry on the left lane, be in business. Sean Rash right now has got to be thinking strikes from here on out to have any chance. Bill O'Neill is already in the high 230s. Sean Rash can strike out for 234. Split in the fifth frame. Huge. Man down in the bathroom.
Oh, no. Eight, ten, split. Good rev rate. Tough one. Nothing like adding insult to injury. Anytime a right-hander leaves an 8-10, it's a, it's a sign of a ball hitting. Ooh, he almost made it. It's a sign of a ball hitting very weak into the pocket. I was pulling the league the other night, throwing 16 pounds, and I let back-to-back 8-10s -back on lane one back at Claremont Bowl. I tell you what, I wanted to go run and hide. Sean, I feel your pain. Did you convert either? No. <laughs> Just wondering. O'Neal in control. Nice break. And the roll continues. Bill O'Neill right now wishes that there were more tournaments to bowl. He's throwing it so good. This doesn't count as a PBA title. But to Bill O'Neill, it certainly does. Winner of the Badger Open. Bill O'Neill's back in complete control, and I don't think his swing has ever been quite this loose bowling in a title match. He's feeling it. Oh. Late trip 10. That was and the late in. Yep. Looking good. That was the late 8-10. What? Let's see. Oh, yeah. All right, Sean, no more A-10s now. Come on. Finish strong. Just about yeah. mathematically over. Pretty sure the lost wire got the A-10 out. Max score 202 for Sean. Bill O'Neill's at 240. Again, right. Bill O'Neill just needs to stay upright and on the lane. He's going to be your winner. Mathematically over. Bill O'Neill is the king of the swing. And congratulations to Bill O'Neill, who came in as a top seed, more than 43,000 points accumulated in the summer swing leading up to this king of the swing event on CBS Sports Network, wrapping up the summer swing event. Bill had been one and two as the number one seed in prior okay, televised stepladder finals. Caught by Brian Valente, as we've documented, in the Badger <laughs> Open here in OKC. Part of that. I know, I tried too. Was well, the number one Go seed. Go try it now, see what it does. <laughs> no. Uh, World Championship <laughs> in 2011. Got me beat by 60. If I can stay within 200. You guys, having some fun here. This one's over. A win for Bill O'Neill, and what a summer swing he had. He'll get a standing O. Thank you, everybody. Thank Here you. at the Grand Casino. Sir, thank you very much. Thank you guys for everything. Thank you. Great job. Better. I'll throw my back out. Oh, this is a heavy one. Thank you again, Hammer. Thank you so much. Turbo grip, Dexter, roll test for you guys. Thanks for all the support. This could really propel Bill O'Neill. Not sure how I'm gonna fit this in the suitcase. To a great 2014-15 season because two victories accomplished here in the summer swing at Oklahoma. First, the PBA Badger Open here in Oklahoma City. And now, King of the Swing. A winner for Sean Rash in the final for the top seed, Bill O'Neill, 245 181. I would say a tremendous summer swing for Bill O'Neill. I imagine Randy's feeling pretty good right now. Thanks, Dave. Bill O'Neill did pretty good on the Badger uh, oil pattern throughout the summer swing. What is it about the Badger you like so much? 
I think, uh, you know, for me, I'm just able to exploit more of the hold than the other guys. Something about my, my ball roll makes me be able to get a little bit left, and the ball just never goes high. And Sean, you know, he bowled a couple of really solid games, and then he got to you, and it was 180. What do you think happened to his ball reaction? It just the left lane started to hook a lot. I think if I would have had to bowl one more game on that lane, it probably would have happened to me, too. Um, he just has a little bit higher rev rate, so his ball sawed a little quicker than mine. But you chose to finish on that lane. Um, I only threw maybe one, maybe two shots from in the entire practice session. I was going to play him um, like I did on the on the Badger Open, play him a little further, further right and straighter, but it wasn't there. So I, I, I took a gamble and threw a couple shots in. So I didn't have a I didn't have a lane preference, and I said, you know what, I'm just going to finish on the left lane and see how, see what happens. What, what has this done for your confidence? We've talked about the change that you made uh, with your four step and what it did with your arm swing, but now you're winning again. What has this done for your confidence? Uh, my, my confidence is at an all time high. You know, I, it, I just I feel good again. You know, it feels good to win. You know, I was I'm able to throw, throw shots when I, when I need it and not, uh, you know, throw it out the window and miss the head pin and all kind of stuff I was doing before. So it feels really good. Family's back home watching. What would you like to say to them? Well, first of all, Christy, I love you. Uh, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't, wouldn't be here right now. Dad, Mom, this is all for you guys. Without your love and support, there's just no, no way I could do this. Thank you. Bill, congratulations on a great summer swing. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of the summer. He's got to with two victories. His fifth PBA title and a win today. Here, king of the swing. My face. The former PBA Rookie of the Year is on a roll. Got to be looking for the next season. Talk about serious momentum. He's created it. We'll wrap up the summer swing next. Oklahoma's Grand Casino Resort King of the Swing is brought to you by Columbia 300. Grab some friends, have some fun, let's bowl. And by Track Bowling. Make the smart move. What a summer swing it's been from Oklahoma City. John Rash got us going with a 300 game. First game out of the gate on CBS Sports Network. Won the Wolf Open. Ronnie Russell won his first career U.S. soil event. And then Bill O'Neill started to really take over. Winning the Badger and the King of the Swing. Jason Belmonte won the Oklahoma Open as well. His 10th career title. At the Wolf, Randy Dahl got started with a 300 from Sean Rash, and he kept on rolling to a title. Well, he did that just because you were back. It's the only reason why he pulled 300. He said, welcome back, Dave Ryan. Pretty good stuff there. It was the 23rd all-time TV 300 game as he celebrates with wife Sarah and eight-month-old daughter Kaylee. The Bear Open. Ronnie Russell. Just too good. Well, he turned a really ugly hard oil pattern into something pretty nice. He was the only player on that telecast that had a good ball reaction, and he took advantage of it. It's for his family just north of Indy, second career title in the Badger Open. And that's when Bill O'Neill needed a double in the tenth against Brian Valenta, the two-hander from Chicago, and he came through. Brian Valenta is probably going to be the most memorable player to have lost in a title match. Bill O'Neill, two of the best shots in the tenth frame for the win. Thrilling finish, but he just got started at the summer swing. Oklahoma Open here at OKC. Jason Belmonte. A two hand up from down under. EJ Tackett was the top seed. It was a rematch of the Masters in New Jersey. Same result, unfortunately, for EJ. Great news for Belmonte. A telecast that involved no 200 games. Jason Belmonte, well, he was good enough on that day. Into double digits now. Ten career titles for Belmo. Then King of the Swing to wrap it up in O'Neill. Steps up big again. Exciting title match with Sean Rash. Sean Rash had a little bit of trouble. Bill O'Neill got off to a red hot start, never looked back. Bill O'Neill made four consecutive shows in a row in the summer swing. That is why he is your king of the swing winner. A couple things we talked about, Randy, as we wrap up a great summer swing on CBS Sports Network. Jason Belmonte, in all likelihood, wraps up player of the year with his victory at the Oklahoma Open. But. Bill O'Neill won title, King of the Swing. Now, that King of the Swing is not an official title, but it puts him back in the conversation maybe, if nothing else, creates momentum for next season. It, it does. It definitely puts him back in the conversation, but Jason Belmonte is still way out in front. We still have 
uh, the World Series of Bowling that will take place later in the year, this fall, and that will determine our player of the year. But Belmonte way out in front. There is one major left in the season. If, if uh, Bill O'Neill were able to somehow capture that last major and maybe another tournament, you, you're going to have to include him in the player of the year conversation. It's been a great summer swing. The 300 game, 23rd all-time PBA history on TV. The Dick Allen 2-8-10 conversion. That was fun to watch. That was what unbelievable. You, what do you take out of our great events on CBS Sports Network? I, I think the cast of, of players, you know, the cast of characters that we had on, on every show was as good as it gets. You know, it was just the, the who's who, the stars of our tour. Uh, we had Pete Weber. You know, you had your Sean Rash and your Jason Belmonte matchup. We had all the superstars on, and they didn't let us down. They, they performed uh, brilliantly. Uh, we had some great title matches. We had some, some routes. Uh, we had everything that you had mentioned. Um, it was just a, it was just a bouillabaisse base of great professional bowling. <laughs> I like the bouillabaisse base reference. Maybe best of all. Well, Randy, it's been a lot of fun working with you again, partner. Milwaukee last year, Oklahoma City this year. We hope to continue on CBS Sports Network next summer. I, I sure hope so, partner. I, I, it's a, you know, you're a great friend of mine, and I, and I love working with you. We have such a good time, and uh, it's great to work with a true professional. Bill O'Neill, momentum for next year. Jason Momani probably seals the deal on his second straight Player of the Year award. First time it's happened on the PBA Tour since 97-98 with Walter Ray Williams Jr. already in the Hall of Fame. Belmonte appears to be headed for the Hall as well. He's got double-digit wins. Congratulations to Bill O'Neill again, the 2014 Oklahoma's Grand Casino Resort PBA Summer Series King of the Swing. And for complete post-game coverage of today's event, head to PBA.com's Extra Frame right after the conclusion of the show. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to CBSSports.com. It's been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. For my broadcast partner, Hall of Famer Randy Peterson, partner, so fun to be with you again this year. Look forward to next summer already. It's Dave Ryan saying so long from the Grand Casino Resort in Oklahoma City. See you next summer on CBS Sports Network.